Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm Ham Radio Dude, and the Zyku 6100 has had so many firmware upgrades in the month and a half that we've had it that we might as well start giving them names and raising them as our own children. Uh, that was a stupid joke. Real stupid joke. Oh, I cracked myself up. But, you know, there was another firmware update on the 17th of January, and the way the firmware update leaks, it finally made it out to the US yesterday. Today, though, I want to not just talk about the firmware update and the features that are here, but let's see if everything was fixed because Zygu says this was an important update. All users must update. Let's see what's been fixed, what's not. And then in the end, we'll give it a whole conclusion. How did this firmware upgrade do? I feel like it's Groundhog's Day. Let's go. Okay, so the first things first, this radio now, instead of reading voltage, reads uh, milliamp hours with the coulometer. And uh, basically that change, and, and they specify it in here, you need to charge and discharge your radio fully uh, four times before the, the memory of everything will become accurate. So if you don't do that, it won't work. I've got two on here, so we're gonna have to come back to that at one point. However, it does say that the status of the upgraded charging indicator light is as follows. A flashing green light means that the radio battery is charging. A solid green light means that the charging's been complete. And if you see no light at all, it means that either you don't have your charger plugged in or you have it disabled in your menu. Again, that's one of those things we're gonna have to test once we have four successful charges and discharges. Now when the battery is displayed under 10% battery left, you're gonna get a red battery or a low battery indicator on the screen. Unfortunately, due to a regulator that's on the microphone, as soon as this goes below seven volts, and I said volts, uh, the microphone will no longer function until you plug it back into a power source. Okay, so the next thing that we're gonna talk about is, and it says the parameter adjustment in the general tab header knob has been changed. And instead of me just talking about it, let me just show you. So now when you go into like radio settings, for example, and you go and you find something like your power out, uh, before you used to have to tap the MFK button and then move it. As you can see now, if I tap the MFK button, nothing happens. Instead, when I'm selected over TX power, I use the VFO knob to adjust the TX power. Okay, so that's what that is. All right, next up is preset message transmission function has been added for W, PS, and ready. And uh, I'll be the first to tell you right here, I couldn't figure this one out. I'm going to need to tag a partner in for this one. So if you know, let me know where it is or what it is. Uh, but all I could tell you is, is CW functionality. I could record a CW message. I can't play it back as a preset message to the, to the world. Um, I could record a preset voice message and it gives me the option to play it back to the world. Uh, and I see no options about ready PS or W in there, but I, I just don't know. So um, again, let me know what you guys know and we'll work through that one together because the documentation is pretty poor. Okay, I've recorded this part four or five times because I lost the initial video and every time I record it, something goes wrong. Let's talk about CW decode. Uh, the words per minute that are shown on there are more accurate representation of what, what is actually displayed. So before it used to say 250 words a minute when it was only you know, 40 words a minute or something like that. That's been corrected and that, that looks really good. The CW decode works for me. I don't have any problems with it. Uh, basically, I look at what the, the average CW words per minute that the radio is hearing is, and I adjust my words per minute on here. So I go to the rate and the speed, and then I adjust that. And, you know, I'll get E's and T's, just, just like Ray would say, I'll get E's and T's, uh, but until... I get it all dialed in and then I actually get the full conversation. I will say this though, uh, if you ever consider it Zygu or Shegu, please bring back the zero beat functionality like you did with the G90 where you could just hit a button and it zero beated it or the X5105 where it zero beated it because that was uh, awesome functionality. And you know, even though we have the waterfall display, it does sometimes kind of suck to, uh, to have to, to try to fine tune it when we could just hit a button and it'll automatically zero beat it. Let's see if we can get this working here.
Okay, as I waited for him here, I was trying to tune into him at first. Let me turn that down. And I got a bunch of I's and E's. But uh, once I finally got him dialed in to the words per minute that he was showing versus the rate and speed I had here, that I can then see uh, K, G, 9, X, C, Q, C, T, or C, W, T. Sorry, this is all backwards. K, G, 9, X, C, Q, W, T, uh, K, G, 9, X, and so <coughs> forth. So that seems to be working uh, with no problem. Again, I'm not really an expert in CW. Um, I'm just kind of like a lonely single sideband guy swimming in a pool of you guys. And try to, <laughs> I'm being stupid. I'm trying to learn CW, and I've been trying to learn, and I'm having a good time with it. But uh, that does help the decoding feature, and it seems to be working here for me. You know, and while I'm at it, too, talking about CW, I did have a couple people ask me about distorted audio with noise reduction enabled on CW. And at first I said, yeah, man, I don't hear what you're talking about. But as soon as I started to turn that the volume up a little bit on the radio with noise reduction enabled, yeah, I think those, I think the CW tones are too hot for the radio and the speaker on the radio is pretty poor and uh, it's causing distortion. I don't think it's anything that, I'm not an expert engineer or anything, but I don't think it's anything in the firmware that's causing it. I, I think it's the actual speaker. That's a very uh, poor speaker. It could be better in causing that issue. Of course, if you increase the speaker, then you lose battery power and all this stuff too. You know, one of the things that I've been doing is I've been using headphones and I don't really hear the same distorted audio that, that, that I hear when I don't have the headphones on. I don't know if that's the same audio distortion that you all are hearing, but uh, if it is, I can confirm it's happening too. But of course, you know, I'm one person and uh, I just listened to the audio uh, that I played back or that I recorded and it wasn't really noticeable. So what I want or I hope that a couple of you could do is, is if you have this radio and you're familiar with CW, can you enable digital noise reduction and let me know in the comments below what you think about it? Did it improve? Is it still have distorted audio? Uh, help me determine whether or not I'm going crazy. Next up, the logo for the Zygu or Shagu 6100 has been updated. Now you have a nice logo that says X6100. All right. So the next one is, is they've optimized the Bluetooth connection. Uh, uh, there was reports that there was compatibility issues in Windows 10 and 11. And I would love to tell you that it's optimized. But if I go over to Bluetooth here and I pop down and allegedly it's scanning now with the Bluetooth devices, pardon me, that's some PLA filament. Uh, it just will scan and it will scan and it will scan. And if I turn it off and I turn it on, all right, we'll try this again here. It'll scan, it will scan, and it will scan. And uh, you know what? We're just going to sit here for a couple of minutes if you don't believe me. But uh, I will say that the Bluetooth on this thing is, is once you could finally get it to connect on the old versions, there was nothing you could really do with it. And uh, that's kind of why I didn't make a firmware update video the last time because this thing doesn't do anything. But anyway, we're sitting here, and I know there's going to be a lot of people who say, well, do you have your discovery on, and so forth, and thank you guys, I appreciate it. But uh, no, the fact of the matter is, is the radio just doesn't have good Bluetooth optimization. Uh, we're still sitting here, and it still hasn't shown any Bluetooth devices. Uh, you know, we could sit here for another 20 or 30 minutes, and it might finally pop up one or two, and then when you get them to work, though, the next time you go to connect, they're a little bit quicker. Uh, but still, it's not that optimized if I still haven't seen one Bluetooth network here. And I know, I 100% know that there's Bluetooth networks that will and should display on here as per the last firmware version. So Bluetooth device connection logic. Okay, so next up is it says the problem with the label of the Access X scanned by the SWR does not upgrade has been fixed. And um, let's just take a look at the SWR. So here we go, we, we are on the handband, and if we go to app here, we go to SWR scan. Uh, right now you can see that it starts at 6.397, it goes up to 7.629. If I change the span, it does adjust, and if I change the span again, it does adjust, and then if I change the speed, it goes faster and slower. Um, so I, I guess that's working now. The next upgrade that they made is they actually, it says the bandwidth of the first group of the filter of single sideband is widened to 50 to 2950 or 2900 hertz. Basically, they widened the bandwidth filter. And so basically, if you go into here, click on filter one, which is over here, pardon the glare there, you'll see 2900 bandwidth. If you don't see 2900 bandwidth, which I did not, 
uh, go to filter one, tap default, and then it should reset and show 2900, uh, you know, but it, it works. And I think I mentioned it before, but I'm going to mention it again. Uh, now, if you have this little shift with your bandwidth and your filters and you save it, shut down your radio, turn it back on, your filter settings will save with the shift. Whereas before they would save to the closest bandwidth, like 2700, 2400, and so forth. Now it allows you to have these little fine shifts, you know, minus 20, minus 35 and save them. So that's awesome. I'm, I'm happy they did that. It wasn't a huge inconvenience, but it was an inconvenience. Next, it says that the indicator string for the ALC has been simplified to automatic gain control. A for auto, F for fast, S for slow, and then automatic gain control dash dash. I don't know, but uh, probably off, I'm assuming. Uh, but anyway, if we are here and we hit the automatic gain control button, uh, you're going to see it here, kind of like where my finger is. It says AGCA right now, AGC off, AGCS for slow, and then AGCF for fast. And I've been leaving it on auto. It seems to do a good job. I got to tell you, this is a big update because we still have like eight to go. Oh, it seems like they also added another thing too here. Right next to automatic gain control and next to lower sideband, you'll see fill one or filter one. Now that wasn't there before, so now we have the ability to know that our filters are enabled and which filter we're on, which is kind of nice, right? I got to tell you, there are a lot of updates and I'm getting hungry. I think I need to get me some tacos. All right, next up isn't a huge update or anything, but they updated the strings for digital lower sideband and digital upper sideband. And so now what we see is, is if we go into a sideband, we see L dig and U dig. Cool. Okay, now this next one is going to be a whole episode on its own. Uh, only because there's like 10 or 12 different features that were enabled. The hand microphone buttons are now enabled. So there is a enable for the special channel. <laughs> I'm kidding. It's the speech button. I said special channel last episode and uh, lock button. There's enable for tuner and quite a few other ones. Again, we'll get all to that in another episode, but I could tell you that it seems to be working now. I'll give you a quick demonstration. All right. So I'm going to hit that tune button. There you go. So it tuned it up and then I can lock it if I need to. I'll, I'm probably doing screenshots right now. And you can see on the, well, I guess it's right here. There's a lock button. When I hit lock, it locks the radio so I can't do anything. So yeah, it does work. That's cool. This next issue is something that I noticed on Temporarily Offline's live stream. And he was having a standing wave ratio issue where his standing wave ratio would go to one to one and it would skyrocket and it would come right back down. And I thought he had a problem with his coax. Uh, I called them out on it and never really heard too much about it. Well, it turns out that this is an issue with the Zygu X6100, and they've corrected it in this firmware update, which I've confirmed. Uh, as you can see right now, I'm on lower sideband. I'm into a dummy load, by the way, because you're going to ask. And uh, I do not have my antenna tuner on now. This is W9FFF testing. One, two, three, three, two, one. I'm testing to see if my standing wave ratio will spike, which it does not appear it is. And it usually will happen at least once by now. This is W9FFF. I'm clear. And now we're going to try it with the antenna tuner enabled because that's possibly another issue. This is W9FFF testing. Testing one, two, three, three, two, one. W9FFF testing to confirm the antenna tuner is uh, functional with no fluctuations in standing wave ratio at three tenths of a watt, which is low power. W9FFF, I am clear. Looks like that's fixed, which is awesome. I really appreciate it. One of the things I noticed I wanted to mention, though, is I still have the lines on either side of the radio uh, when the radio is uh, not plugged into a power source. I can't plug it into a power source right now because we're trying to let this thing discharge. Next up, we're going to talk about maximum output power under external power supply condition has been improved. And I could tell you this is I can't plug in the charger right now because I'm not fully uh, discharged. But when I was fully discharged and I plugged it in, I did check it real quick. And it seems like I'm getting 10 watts uh, on sidebands. I haven't checked CW or anything along those lines. But um, interestingly enough, I'm also getting 10 watts on AM. So uh, I think that that's fixed. If you guys have any problems, again, let me know. Next, they say that the system startup sequence has been op optimized. And I don't know if we're going to be able to see that. It might be a back-end Linux thing that shows the optimization. But here we go. We turn it on. Let's see if this is any faster booting up. 
it's it's not faster to me. So any optimization that they did was probably in the back end, um, and it might might actually free up things like milliseconds or or just help less processes start up and make it less cluttered. Um, but also, I do want to point out that we still do have that issue where if you start it up and for some reason the radio isn't uh, isn't showing anything on here and you have all your stuff plugged in, you might have to tap the power button to give it that second boost and turn it on. Now, perhaps the reason that I am 100% happy to upgrade and I think the whole upgrade makes it worth it, it's going to be different for everybody, right? But I am really impressed with the, the fixing of the noise reduction. So the noise reduction algorithm has been optimized. And, you know, before, if you've seen any of my other videos, you had this weird wavy wobbly tone, almost like there was two channels of the same tone and they were slightly off. It, I just couldn't, I couldn't do it. But uh, in this version of the firmware, they really did increase the, uh, the noise reduction. Let me see if I can give you an example here. And it's going to be kind of hard because I got the radio over here, but, uh, Let's see. Right now I have the noise reduction off. Noise reduction zero. Yep. Uh, I told them to uh, directly ground the grid. Well, Off. Zero. No, no. Directly grounded uh, to the cat. Oh, you said they weren't. Oh, they weren't connected at all. Were they not connected at all, or were they grounded through a cap? They were grounded through the cap, and they, uh... I think they maybe even a resistor. I don't know about you all, but uh, that sounds way better than before. Um, so I'm going to give a shout out to Shegu, Zygu. Uh, good job on finally fixing that issue. Uh, but where do we stand here? There's two more things that really I don't need to talk about too much. And that's one, the system data structure has been optimized. That's going to be a back-end thing as far as I know. Um, and we shouldn't be able to change anything or really see any of those changes physically. Uh, but they're happening on the back end. And then the display screen backlight has been adjusted. So you have five settings when it has no battery uh, or external power and 10 settings when there is external power. And I'm assuming that's to uh, help the, 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 the overlong life of the battery with no power plugged in. So one of the things that were done, but one of the things I do want to just kind of mention is, is there used to be an option two or three firmware upgrades ago that uh, you can enable IQ out and you could use HDSDR on your 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 computer. You, seemingly, there's nowhere to enable it anymore. Now, I need to dig further into that and I need to actually try it. Maybe it just enabled automatically, but I don't see that as the case. Another thing I thought was weird, and let me go ahead and get this up here. There used to be three firmware upgrades ago, there used to be a option. And the option here was um, under display setting, your FFT span could be 100K. Um, oh yeah, I have to use this now. Um, or it could be 50K, and then it would go down to 25K. And that was changing the span of the whole waterfall display. But about two upgrades ago, they got rid of the 25K option, which some people really enjoy to really dial in on, on what they're looking at on the spectrum. So that they haven't brought 25K back yet again, not a huge deal, but I'd like to see that in the future. You know what? It's been a long episode. We just went over nearly every feature that's available. I'm down to 7.3 volts and it's showing me in volts. So it isn't showing like milliamps or anything like that, but uh, I still don't have enough to charge this back up. So we'll have to hit back on that in another time. I'm rambling now. I'm hungry. I think instead of tacos, I'm going to go get huevos rancheros. I hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think below. 73.